tham gia cái nhé
Welcome to Berman's 77th anniversary event. Thank you for joining us. It's wonderful to be able to celebrate the end of this school year, which has been anything but ordinary. We are here tonight to celebrate the dedication of our community, administration, principals, teachers, building and bus staff, all the children, and especially the medical task force that led us through this successful school year. Planning this event was a kind of microcosm for what we imagined this year was like for the rest of the school. Every time we thought we had a plan, we had to pivot and change course, much as we imagined the medical task force did every step of the way. We are so grateful to the medical task force for having worked together to lead the entire school community to the completion of a successful year. Close your eyes for a second, I'll just wait, and picture a member of the Sanhedrin. What do they look like? How do they act? You may be envisioning some old man with a beard hovering over a safer, like the old guys in the bank in Mary Poppins. But did you know that members of the Sanhedrin actually had to be tall, good looking, and smart? Sounds like the perfect chidduch date to me. But that's not all. Rambam adds seven qualities, wisdom, humility, fear of God, hatred of ill-gotten gain, love of truth, love of one's fellow man, and a good reputation. Seems like there are pretty high standards for being a judge of the entire Jewish people. In the times of the second Beit HaMikdash, the Sanhedrin served as a guiding light to the Jewish people. The great Sanhedrin was made up of 70 or 71 judges, depending on whom you ask. The Tanaim couldn't even agree on that. How did they get anything done? Anyway, these judges met every day and rendered decisions on a variety of issues. One of the most famous members of the Sanhedrin that we know about was Mordechai. Yeah, the one from the Purim story. You heard me right. If you recall, Masecha Megillah tells us that Mordechai spoke all 70 languages of the world. This was actually a requirement for all members of the Sanhedrin. They had to be able to communicate with any person from every imaginable background in order to hear both sides of the case equally and make a fair ruling. Do you see where I'm going with this? Individually and collectively, our medical task force embodies the qualities that Rambam requires of the Sanhedrin members. This year, they've served as our Sanhedrin, taking into account all the different needs and people in our community. They may not know 70 languages, but they do have to know a few. The language of scientific reasoning, the language of empathy, and obviously, English. Fun fact, members of the Sanhedrin also had to know medicine and witchcraft, but that's a skill needed for a different kind of disaster and hopefully only in a different era. The first Sanhedrin came into existence in Hellenistic times. As more and more Jewish people assimilated, they were forced to rethink the way Judaism was presented to people. They made a series of new laws to encourage Jews to keep halacha despite the challenging times. Similarly, our task force faced seemingly insurmountable challenges in helping our community acclimate to the harsh reality of living with COVID. In an ever-changing tide of new scientific discovery, they had to keep us afloat and help us navigate the tumultuous waters of this pandemic. They far surpassed that task, and with the dedication of the Berman staff, not only helped us survive, but flourish. Masachet Tani 11a teaches of the obligations of community members in a time of crisis. It says, Our masters taught, when Israel are in distress and one of their numbers separates himself from them, the two ministering angels who accompany every individual come and say, so-and-so here, who separated himself from the community, will not behold the comforting of the community. All the more so, a person who steps forward in a time of crisis deserves to not only see the comforting of the community, but rejoice in their redemption. Our medical task force, Sefi Hafter, Neil Siegel, Tamar Zakheim, Miriam Kotek, and Michelle Klein, stepped forward this year in ways we could never have imagined. They, more than ever, deserve to celebrate and be celebrated as we embark on the path to normalcy again. Thank you to all of you who supported tonight's celebration. Your giving spirit has been crucial this year. You gave us the confidence we'd have the resources to overcome the challenges and uncertainty brought about by the pandemic. Of course, thank you to our event co-chairs, the Falks and the Lamids, 
These events depend on the generosity of our lay leaders, and we're grateful for all the time and effort you devoted tonight. And a special thank you to the Berman professional staff. We're grateful to Sarah Zuckerman, Jennifer Zuckerman, Shamara Gass, Mary Levine, and the entire Berman professional team for delivering another successful virtual event. Special thank you to Tansi Well for creating this video. It's a blessing to have such a talented and accomplished professional willing to work with Berman, who also happens to be a Berman parent and alum. Now this video is about the story of how the medical task force, faced with all the uncertainty of a rapidly spreading pandemic, was able to respond to the crisis by keeping our school community safe and healthy. The video profiles how five medical professionals who had not previously worked together became confidants and companions navigating the uncharted territory of COVID-19. They talked and they talked some more, wrestling with all the complexities and risks facing our students and professionals. And they figured it out. They helped us open without compromising safety and in doing so, gained the trust of our community and created the space for our Berman professionals to do what they do best, educate. So thank you, enjoy the film. was just struggling trying to keep up with talking with the health department and all the different parents calling in with questions when we didn't have that much information yet and there weren't really cases in our area yet. I felt this huge responsibility. I still feel a huge responsibility being the nurse in the building. There was no playbook. Uh, we have not lived through something like this before in our lifetime at least. I don't know that any of us really totally could fathom what this would turn into. We rapidly realized that we needed a full task force, that no one doctor would be able to handle all of the concerns. And uh, Miriam Kotek, our phenomenal school nurse, um, having to deal with the questions every day on the ground, it was gonna be more than any one or two professionals could handle. Dave Sloan uh, calls me, you know, Michelle, we're trying to put together a medical task force. We're looking at, you know, ways that we'll be able to open up the school and would you be interested? And uh, I have years and years of history with the school. I have three grown alumni children. So um, my heart has always been with the school. My field is pediatric infectious diseases. So certainly relevant to, you know, what, what, what I was doing professionally. And so um, I said yes, you know, and school is near and dear to my heart. Joining the task force for me was a no brainer because I wanted my kids to be in school. <laughs> um, I was really honored to be asked and continue to feel honored to be a part of it. We want our children to learn math and science and Gemara and, and, and Chumash, and we want them to learn all that. But at the end of the day, our promise to, to parents, first and foremost, is that your child is going to be safe in our care. And this was the most sacred task that we had. We were meeting every week. Um, at the beginning, we actually had multiple conference calls, um, many extra meetings to just talk things through. It was really a sense of getting to know each other, what were our backgrounds, how did we want to approach it, and really what the administration wanted for us. We had to plan for a whole new school year with a whole set of expectations, what the new school year could look like, when nobody knew what the next month was going to look like. Here we were dealing with something that's truly life and death, but also constantly changing and so new and continues to be new in some ways. There's still a lot of unknown. Nothing was, was documented yet. We had no data to go by. So we were actually having to come up with protocols when the CDC didn't have any guidelines, when the state of Maryland didn't have any guidelines.
there's never been a worldwide pandemic in the 21st century. That's just not a thing. And to build a model that fits our school, our community, our, our climate, politically, socially, I think is like a superhuman undertaking. School is much more than just book learning and knowledge. There's tremendous social and um, emotional growth that has to happen with school as well. We're trying to figure out what was that balance of what could we do safely and what just wasn't going to be safe enough. And considering the health and well-being of not only our students, but our, our professional staff, our teachers, the other staff in the building, as well as the parents at home. So we wanted it to be a situation where where students felt comfortable, felt safe, weren't afraid of looking at each other, you know, and everything would look kind of the same, but with some differences. Some of our staff had the biggest concerns and we wanted to make sure that our teachers also felt safe and protected. When it was clear that we had to wear masks and uh, physically distance ourselves from everyone, then we sort of had a template uh, to work from, and then just started discussing ideas and how to make that work in the best way possible. You have uh, lots of different opinions in the room, but we all agreed on what was important, and we all agreed on the same goals, and we all agreed that it was important to really listen to one another, and I think what made us work so well together was that level of respect. Things are changing all the time and that you need to be able to say, you know, we said this last week, but we're realizing this, or it's not working, or the data has said this, and just being able to be flexible with that. There were times that we made decisions that were um, stricter than Maryland State or the CDC required, and there were other times where we made decisions that were um, a little more open than some of the state or county recommendations. We had a look at the factors that were specific to our community. It was really a lot about logistics, ordering the masks, ordering the, the OWL system so that the kids could learn remotely, um, taking care of the ventilation system, figuring out the spacing within the school, what type of masks to order. I mean, it was down to those levels of minutia and we couldn't really open school until we had those things all in place. Well, senior year is something I've been looking forward to the second I stepped foot in Berman. I was worried that I wouldn't be able to spend it with friends. I was worried I wouldn't be able to see my teachers to say in-person goodbyes. Honestly, I just wanted to like be in school and be back in a classroom just have some more normalcy. We're actually programmed to be learning, not top down, but laterally. And when the environment is absent, there's so much learning that's lost. I mean, how often do you have it that a kid asks a question and a peer clarifies the idea better than the teacher could have? And when only one person can talk at once because you have to unmute yourself or you have to click the raise hand button and the teacher misses it, like there's so much lost. I really wanted to be back in person to see friends and teachers and like like I love the building too just like seeing the halls and like everything it's just like so nice nervous coming in but once I got back into school it was so nice to see all my friends seeing my friends every day just it's such an incredible thing and you really take it for granted until you don't have it and coming back to school just made me realize how special it is to be able to come into school and see your friends every day so I felt very nervous in the beginning if I would get sick and I would give it to someone else but now that we're in school and I see that the maintenance staff and the nurses do everything that they could possibly do, and it's very, very safe. When I was going back to school, I felt happy. Um, I like seeing my friends in person. I got to paint, and I got to color, 
And they got to do Play-Doh. I felt like we were safe because I know we wouldn't be back in school if it weren't safe. I have to like hand sanitize every day and like, it's, we're gonna have to like distance, like I don't know how I'm gonna survive. So that like went through my head. I was just like doubting everything. But then when I came into school, it was like, it was so amazing. Like it couldn't have been better. I had a PowerPoint and spreadsheet with all the rules and guidelines in the first day. They presented it to us and just made clear what all the rules were gonna be and I think, and just having an explanation was I think very, very helpful. There was always someone who was checking in students that would be coming, making sure that they filled out the survey just so they could have tracing. Um, we could only go in through one spot and um, the high school, the middle school and the lower school came into the school from different points. If someone lost their mask, or if your mask broke, there would always be spares. And I think the precautions really help. Everything was straightforward, super simple, um, easy to follow. So it made it very easy for us to stay on track. I could tell you that I felt very safe. I felt very comfortable that there was a protocol. Here are the rules, here's how we do it. It was very comfortable to have kids back in normalcy and growth in learning. I think it was just a superhuman accomplishment. I have spreadsheets to keep track of spreadsheets <laughs> um, because there's just so much information. Every day I have a spreadsheet of for each division for who's, who's out with what symptoms and when they're getting their test results and how long they need to be out. And then um, we have spreadsheets to keep track of everybody who's been vaccinated. And we have, I mean, there's just, and then each day all the students who have their temperatures taken, we have a spreadsheet for and just it's really just so many spreadsheets. If I never see an Excel spreadsheet again after this year, <laughs> that'd be fine. <laughs> so we certainly heard a mix of reaction to precautions and, and it's understandable. There was a spectrum of people who told us we were too strict, people who told us we weren't careful and strict enough or safe enough and everything in between. Overall, I think the school community was very generous in adopting those guidelines and recognizing that we were all pulling in this together. Well, and all of us recognize that you can never, you know, eliminate risk, and, and that's really true for everything in life. But really, a shared commitment to to balancing that, minimizing risk with um, with doing as much as we could for the kids um, and and for the school to operate as best as possible. We have had a couple of cases in our community. And we have had to shut a couple of pods here and there, but. Because this committee prepared us so well, we were able to do it so seamlessly. We knew exactly what we needed to be done. We knew exactly what we needed to communicate, when we needed to communicate it, who we needed to communicate with. It's definitely had its challenges, but I have felt so supported by the administration, by the teachers, by the parents, just everybody coming together and really taking it seriously um, so that we could have a successful year. The support within the community was overwhelming because even though the task force put in place the, um, the plan on how to do it, if we didn't have a cooperative and engaged faculty, administration, support staff at the school, as well as the parent body and the students, it just wouldn't have worked. So I've been a Berman parent for over 11 years, and I can say that I am more proud than ever to say that I'm part of this community. I think that Berman did an incredible job this year to keep our kids safe first and um, in school as much as possible, because we know that that is what's best for them ultimately for their, you know, their social emotional well-being. I'm also a nurse, and so I've taken care of COVID patients. I know how scary COVID can be. Um, so all the more so, I'm very appreciative to what the school has done. I cannot imagine how the medical task force figured out a way to make pretty much everybody happy. And I don't know what my life right now would be without them. To find a way for all of us to be able to come together again as a community 
and to come together to learn, which is what we do best, to teach and to learn and to be together in person as a Kahila. And I'm just so grateful. I want to say thank you to the medical task force. I can't say it better than the sitter. For everyone who works with the Tzibor, Hashem should pay your reward. A shout out to um, you know all the professionals that that sat on this task force as well. But really, our new executive director, Shmari Gassner, who is responsible for all the operations and making it happen um, in the building and facilities and the owl cameras and the desks and everything in every room and the square footage, and Rachel Hanloff and, and uh, Sarah Sickerman, and, and we just have to give them a, a Hakarda Tov as well. It was really an incredible undertaking. I know that when I asked you to be on this committee, you probably never thought that this was what it would turn into. Um, you have uh, become more than a medical task force. Uh, you have become uh, confidants. You have become a guiding light for me and our team and our community. I'm just really proud of all of us and not just the task force, but, but everyone who facilitated, uh, you know, being able to put all these things in place and allow our kids and our faculty to come into the school and feel confident that they were safe. I want to say thank you to everyone. I want to say thank you for entrusting me and our team uh, to protect the children and the adults of our school community. This was a year where there was so much that was out of our control and uh, we did this together. To my fellow task force members who have all done an outstanding job, dedicated, much time. I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot from my colleagues. I'm really very grateful for everyone's efforts. A big thank you to Neil and Tamar and Michelle and Rabbi Kastan um, and Benny, Sarah, Rachel, Shmaria, Miriam, our group that met every week, which really formed kind of this, this community working towards this common goal. And it was such an honor and privilege um, and continues to be such an honor and privilege to work with all of you. Miriam Kotek is the true honoree and star of every day. She is cautious and she is thoughtful and she really embodies that balance that has made our school year so successful. Miriam is constantly fielding emails, questions, phone calls from parents, staff, us, um, the Department of Health, the governor, I don't even know who. Um, she really deserves a medal for what she has taken on. Miriam is the one who took the brunt of everything. She was amazing in all of this. I want to thank the task force so much. I want to thank Dr. Sefi Hefter, Dr. Michelle Klein, Dr. Neil Siegel, and Tamar Zakheim for all of their time, their patience with me. <laughs> They're answering every question, being available at all hours um, to help me, uh, answer all the questions I have and make this school year the success that it was. If at this point you would like me to delete your cell phone numbers, or if you would like to start blocking my cell phone number, I won't take it personally. <laughs>I get choked up when I watch that video. It's my second time around and I'm still getting choked up. Such a sense of gratitude to all of you for the time that you've given. Every week we would get together and you thought that you were just giving us medical advice, but every child in our school, every word of davening, Every word of Torah learning. Over 600 children got to learn this year because of you. And I'll be forever grateful for your wisdom and your guidance. And we are all indebted to you. It is my absolute honor to ask you to please unwrap and open your gifts on behalf of the Berman Hebrew Academy.
we made each of you a tefillah l'rofe with an inscription at the bottom that says, presented to each of your names for dedicated service in the medical task force, your sage advice and tremendous commitment to the health of the Berman community through the COVID-19 pandemic made it possible for our students to learn and thrive safely in this challenging year. Berman Hebrew Academy 77th anniversary celebration, June 8th, 2020, 20th of Sivan 5781. Thank you so much. And there are more gifts in your bag. <laughs> We got you each really nice scrubs <laughs> and with a beautiful hanger that says, I can't even see it on the screen right now. A hero hangs out here. May you wear it in good health. And I just wanna finish off by saying, as Rod Middleman was, was alluding to in the video, when we say, kola oska mitzarche tzibro ben Right, so that means that when, when we actually serve our community with good faith, but for you, this was a little bit different this year. So I want to give a little bit of a spin on it, which is you are Oska Mitzarche Tzibor, Be'emuna. At a time of such uncertainty, you gave us certainty. At a time when we didn't know what we can trust and what we can believe in, you gave us something we can trust and believe in. We trusted in you and you allow us to trust in each other. And for that, we are indebted to you. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Um, thank you for this unbelievable gift and this unbelievable tribute. Uh, Rabbi Dr. Kastan, thank you for those unbelievably kind and meaningful words. I'll say I was a little nervous about crying during my speech tonight, so thank you also. <laughs> um, but really, I have to thank you for your leadership over this past year for delicately balancing community safety with the educational, social, and emotional needs of the students, and for your trust and your commitment to our guidance. And thank you to all the dedicated individuals, staff and volunteers who worked so hard to make this evening an incredible expression of Hakarat Hatov to the members of the Medical Task Force. And in my eyes, most importantly, to Kadosh Baruch Hu, to God for granting us and our children this fulfilling academic year despite all of the challenges. In our liturgy, perhaps the most fundamental expression of Akrat HaTov Tashem comes in the commonly recited bracha, blessing of Borena Fashot. This blessing, said after consuming basic foods like water, fruits and vegetables, essentially thanks God for sustaining all of humanity. But if you look closely at the text, it's really somewhat peculiar. We say, Baruch HaTashen, blessed are you God, etc. Borei nefashot rabot v'chasronan, creator of numerous living things and their deficiencies. In this bracha, thanking God for sustaining him, us, we thank him for what is lacking in us, for our very humanity itself, for the things that keep us humble. And who among us did not learn about humility over these past 15 months? We watch doctors, experts in their fields, struggle to treat the most critically ill patients. Years of training and practice, not enough to prepare them for this experience. We felt helpless when family or friends needed us most and we simply could not be with them. As parents and teachers, we struggle to help our children Frustrated by weeks away from friends, months in front of screens, and despite all our best efforts, we simply couldn't make things all better. We tried to plan smacho at a time when we can barely make plans for the next week as the world around us so rapidly changed. And we tried to plan a school year in this unchartered territory. We were humbled, 
we faced our lack of control, our lack of knowledge, and our deficiencies, our chesronot. Yet, in the bracha of Borei Nefashot, we thank God for those deficiencies, because out of those imperfections come the elements that make us complete, a drive for growth and a drive for connection. From our recognition of what we lack comes our ability to grow stronger. The productivity and advancement in science and medicine over the past year is truly awe-inspiring. Our teachers learn to harness technology in creative ways to educate, to connect, and build deeper bonds. Individuals and communities demonstrated resilience that they were unaware they were capable of. And as individuals and as communities, we grew. What I think is really at the heart of this bracha is our gratitude for the need for connection. We recognize that it's our imperfections that make us require the other. Had God created us perfectly on our own, we would not need community to complete us. This sense of kinship, of filling in where others need you, permeated this year. Our group, Rabbi Dr. Kastan, Sarah, Shmaria, Rachel, who is in our Tfilo daily, Leanne, Benny, Miriam, Tamar, Neil, Michelle, and I, who met nearly weekly since last June, formed its own community. We each brought our own expertise and perspective to the table, or in this case, the Zoom screen, the medical, the educational, the logistics, the social and emotional elements. We certainly did not always agree, but we complement each other. And as a group, we could accomplish what none of us could do on our own. I have grown and become more complete from my interactions with this fantastic group of individuals. I stand at this juncture, still mourning what has been lost, the individuals, the experiences, and the time. And yet, I am so filled with Hakarat HaTov for where we have come. I really look forward with hope, imagining what this incredible Burman community can accomplish taking all that we have learned from this experience and that all we can continue to do to perfect each other and our community and grow stronger. On behalf of my fellow task force members, I thank you for the privilege of being part of this process. Thank you, Sefi, for your beautiful words and your leadership in the, in the medical task force. Um, I'm about to introduce um, something that we are incredibly proud of, and I'll introduce it in just a couple moments. But we would be remiss if we didn't actually mention um, some other heroes of the year. First and foremost, I want to thank the heroes of this year beyond the medical task force. It was our teachers, our administrators, our staff, our maintenance crew, our kitchen staff, everybody that actually took those protocols, took those guidelines and policies and actually had to put them to action. The people that came into the building and had to teach through it all and keep the kids engaged and keep the kids learning. None of this could have been possible without our entire staff pulling together. I also want to make sure to thank Benny Berkowitz. Benny, you have many meetings as board president that you have to attend to. And we added more to your play with the medical task force. And as board president, you have to face many challenges and you live through those challenges together with me. And I can confidently say that there were many moments at the very beginning of the pandemic and through the pandemic where I had many doubts, where I would come to you and I would say, what if we're wrong? What if we don't know the data? What if someone gets sick? What do we do if? Benny, you were my rock. And I'm forever grateful. This year could not have been possible without you either. Thank you for that. I also want to thank all of the spouses, all of the partners that had to put up with this year, the spouses and partners of the people in the medical task force, who it was more than once a week for many weeks that we were meeting, all the spouses and partners of all of our staff members who worked incredibly hard, the spouses of our administrators who put in overtime and our teachers who put in overtime. Really, this was a monumental undertaking 
When they say it takes the village, it literally took our entire village. We did this together. Thank you to the medical task force for your guidance, but thank you to the entire village for taking that guidance and for showing your fortitude and for showing what we are made of. And lastly, I really wanna thank our students because not only did you come into the building and not only did you put your masks on and participate and still keep learning and you kept, as Dory would say, just keep swimming, you kept swimming. But I wanna thank you because on a daily basis, you, the students, remind us of why we do what we do. And through the most challenging year, you reminded us once again of why we do what we do. So keep learning and keep pushing yourself and we will keep pushing for you as well. Having said that, we knew that this year, we did not want this year to be marked just by COVID. This was not, we made it very clear from the very beginning that this was not just going to be a year of managing COVID but that it was going to be a year of learning, a year of growth and a year of thriving. So we present you with a special gift to show you what this year was really all about, that we managed COVID for all of these reasons, and that is the growth of our students. So we're so proud to present to you a music video that our students put together with Dove Rosenblatt, who actually attended Berman at some point, and his amazing band, Distant Cousins. So please give your attention to the new hit original song by the Berman students and distant cousins. Thank you everybody for coming today. Thank you for spending your lunchtime and recess time with us. Um, this is going to be such a fun workshop hour um, with distant cousins and I will let the, the cousins take it away. Hi, everybody. My name is Dove. Hello, everybody. Ami. Hey, Cousin David. Excited to be here. So our goal, our mission, is that in the next hour, together with all of you from Berman Hebrew Academy, we're going to write a brand new song. Oh, we are feeling super energetic and upbeat today. We got upbeat rock and roll. So upbeat rock and roll. We got... Now I think we're ready to write our song. Yeah. start this process. So the first thing we do is we take a step back and we talk to each other. Just share some of your favorite memories from Berman Hebrew Academy. Really cool art projects. And one of the projects we did this year was we made a bridge out of oil pastels and watercolors. I'm thankful for the Berman community and all my friends around. I'm super thankful for all the teachers. We doesn't learn a little more Hebrew. What do you do every Rosh Kodesh? We have pajama day. Pajama days is a biggie. Yes, I love okay. this. Derek, Eretz, and Mido. Derek, Eretz, and Mido were really important this year in school because we had to respect each other. To have a safe environment at Berman. I'm so thankful for all that we were able to do because we were in school. Totally. And when it's up to 73. Shabbat Shalom.
thank you deeply from the bottom of our hearts for joining this creative adventure with us. Thank you so much for facilitating this. This was great. We're so excited to hear our song. We don't go to school. I told her, oh, don't. Good evening. As others have already said, the past 16 months have been an unprecedented time. It's easy to forget how much uncertainty there was last summer about the feasibility of reopening the school in the fall. I want to thank all of the faculty for their commitment to the school and allowing us to reopen and thrive this year, despite the many safety and educational challenges. Throughout it all, our honorees on the medical task force were always available to provide support and guidance in our constant effort to provide the safest and most nurturing educational environment for our children. We succeeded, thank God, due to the task, force, task force's tireless efforts. Finally, thank you to our parents and donors for all of your support. This year, our supporters were more generous than we could have ever hoped for. And I hope you have seen how much your donations and time and money have allowed us to continue to thrive. May we all continue to stay healthy and celebrate together in person next year. Thank you for joining us and I hope you have a wonderful summer. Good night. <laughs>